the next slide I'm gonna show you is so it will blow your brain off if Ooh. if you have emotions if you don't have emotions you'll just like this dude you'll just look at it and and you'll be okay with it but first I'm gonna show you the the big picture ready oh. you ready mm -hmm. Whoa. Like Hello folks, I'm going to be showing a picture of this image from the James Webb Space Telescope of the Carina Nebula to a random student in New York City. Let's go ahead and see their reaction. But first, let's see where the Carina Nebula is in the night sky. The Carina Nebula is based in the southern hemisphere. If we zoom in to its bottom right corner, we find ourselves in this section of the nebula. This was captured by the La Silla Observatory in Chile in 2012. And if we keep zooming in to the bottom corner, we find ourselves in the famous cosmic cliffs. This was the subject of JWST's famous picture. And if we zoom into one of the dust pillars looming above the interstellar gas, we can see just how mightily big these interstellar gas molecules really are. This dust pillar itself is more than 7 light years high. So you get a scale for just how big this nebula is. And now if we zoom out, we can see just how much the resolution has improved due to James Webb Space Telescope. This is the famous picture of the Carina Nebula. Hi everyone, we're here with uh, Marco. So um, I'm going to be showing Marco one of James Webb's five images, uh, infrared images that it took of the night sky. And uh, he's going to give us his uh, reaction. So uh, here you go, Marco. This is the picture of the Carina Nebula. Yeah. Never saw a nebula before, so this yeah. is pretty interesting, in my opinion. Do you have any uh, questions yeah. about the nebula? Like, uh, Yeah, where is the nebula? Exactly. So, yeah. the Carina Nebula is in the southern hemisphere, so if you're around South Africa, the Cape of Good Horn, you should be able to look up. You won't see it with your naked eye. You'll need a telescope. But yeah, it's around the southern hemisphere. And it's um, about 7,600 light years away from the Earth. So. Yeah. In terms of cosmic distances, it's not too far away, but it's it's pretty out there. Interesting. Um, yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. And uh, the color, you you might think uh, there's a there's a huge contrast in the color, um, orange and blue, right? So there's a huge contrast in the color here. Um, and why is that? The orange is actually ionized gas trying to rise above, um, and that inside all of that gas are new stars being born. Um, because nebula are basically uh, stellar nurseries. When a star dies, it leaves its remnants in the form of a nebula. And that's where new stars are born. Uh, so that's what you're seeing here. You're looking at a, at a hospital where new babies are being born. Uh, so it's, a very, it's very big, it's, is what you're it's, saying. It's, it's huge. pretty big, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. These are all uh, beautiful images. This was taken in the infrared. So this is technically a false color image. Um, if you look at the nebula with your naked eye, you probably won't see this much because with the naked eye, um, you can't see through the dust. There's a lot of interstellar dust covering the stars and that's why James Webb needed to peer in the infrared so it could slice through the dust and kind of see these stars being born. No, I think it's interesting. I never saw a picture of it. Yeah. Hello everybody, my name is Abunayadik Berry from Berry Science Lab and today I am with Rifat Berry, an expert on the James Webb Space Telescope and on space as a whole, who is going to tell us about the third image that the James Webb Space Telescope took. Now, if that isn't clear enough, we're going to be talking about the Carina Nebula, a nebula located approximately 7,000 light years away from Earth. It's fascinating how the James Webb Space Telescope is even able to capture these pictures. So, as you can see, it's extremely beautiful with cosmic cliffs. And this is a picture that the Hubble Space Telescope took a few decades ago of the Carina Nebula. It looks beautiful, but it is actually covered by a lot of cosmic dust and gas, which interferes with the background. Anyway, it also looks kind of different in other ways uh, for, for compared to the James Webb Space Telescope's image of it. That's James Webb Space Telescope. And 
as you can see, this one is taken at a different angle. So, if, can you move back to the previous slide with Hubble? If you look at Hubble's, you can see that it is covered by a bunch of cosmic dust and gas, which gives us a purplish tint. However, the James Webb Space Telescope image is able to overcome and pierce this gas, which allows it to take clearer, much more beautiful images. And also, as you can see, we have the classic patterns on the stars, the, those little glints, which we explained uh, yesterday when we talked about the first image of the James Webb Space Telescope. So, as President Biden once said, America is the land of possibility. Not because, because we can build an atom bomb or annihilate the world. But because we have NASA. Because we have the ability to put a man on the moon or to put the James Webb Space Telescope into space. And to take us back 13.5 billion years in time. Uh, closer to the Big Bang. Can you tell us what part of the uh, Ada Carina, no, the Carina Nebula in general, we are seeing right here. Yes, so the Carina Nebula is in the southern hemisphere of the cool. night sky. Uh, mm -hmm. And so if you're in uh, South uh, Africa, like Cape Town, and, I went there once. And you have a huge telescope, the maybe uh, 10 or 20 meters in length, then you have a good chance of seeing it uh, on a not too cloudy night. So, that's where the Carina Nebula is in terms of where it is in the night sky. But can you tell us where it is relative to the Carina Nebula? Yes. So, in terms of uh, our cosmic neighborhood, the Carina Nebula is in one part of our Milky Way. Is it like an isolated leg? No. Do you have a picture of it? Uh, so, if you look at the Milky Way, you'll see that the Milky Way has spiral arms it's a uh, milky way is known as a barred spiral galaxy so have you ever seen a picture of milky way with those spiral arms yeah so one of those arms is called the carina sagittarius arm and it's basically uh, an outer arm of the milky way and that's where you'll find the carina nebula the carina nebula is about 7600 light years away uh from us and so what about where was this picture taken in the carina nebula it's probably huge, considering okay. that a nebula is the remains of a dead star, which uh, can power the birth of new stars, which leads to formation of galaxies. So, the nebulas have to be reasonably huge. Yes, a nebula is like a big neighborhood. So, let me show you. Very so, big neighborhood of birthing stars. Yes. So, here is a map of the Carina Nebula. Mm -hmm. So, there let me. Are. So, these are the main... Uh, features of the neighborhood so you don't need to know all of the things in here the main highlights are these uh, at a Carina this is the Eta Carina um, Eta Carina has its own nebula called the homolycus uh, I was or, thinking of. oh you were thinking of homolycus no I was thinking uh, that the Eta Carina nebula was its own thing yeah uh, we'll we'll look at that pretty soon. What does this mean? Um, it's a, it's a, a nebula in itself. So you have a nebula inside a nebula. So this is another nebula inside the Carina Nebula. Wow. This is called the Keyhole Nebula. Nebula Septin. This is the Keyhole Nebula, and it's called the Keyhole Nebula because it, it looks For like for obvious reasons. Um, you also have what are known as Bach globules. Um, these are basically nebula within nebula that are so dark that they trap they stop visible wavelength light behind them so you don't see anything behind those Bach globules we'll see two examples of a of a Bach globule coming up um, what else do you have here uh, is there anything I'm missing oh uh, there's something called the uh, cosmic mountains Hmm. around here and was this where the picture was taken considering uh they look sort of like cosmic mountains um no the cosmic mountains are somewhere around here on the lower right hand part of the image can so you estimate what part of the image the picture was taken this is the whole Carina nebula no no like the, the image the, 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 the image cosmic that the... cliffs are around here huh. uh, around the lower right 
Okay. So if you actually zoom in around to this part of the nebula, this is what you'll see. Ooh. In fact, this was not taken by JWST. This was taken from um, Hubble. From not even Hubble. This was taken from a ground observatory here on Earth. Okay. So this, okay, why did I put this? This is boring. The next slide I'm going to show you is so, it will blow your brain off if, if you have emotions. If you don't have emotions, you'll just, like this dude? You'll just look at it and, and you'll be okay with it. So, but can you tell me first why infrared? We'll, co we'll come back to this. Okay. But first, I'm going to show you the, the big picture. Ready? Oh. You ready? Mm-hmm. What? It looks like I'm not gonna say what it looks like. Mm, I'm what, gonna keep no, my mouth shut tell, about the other meaning. It of looks it. like a bomb, right? It looks like two balls next to each other. It looks like a a bomb exploding in space. It looks like it's a true. nuclear bomb, right? Yeah. What is this? So I'll explain this to you. This is Eta Carina. So if you zoom into Eta Carina, this is what you'll see. So is this what Eta Carina has been doing for the past few? So yeah, Eta Carina, is, let me explain to you what Eta Carina is. It's nothing more than a star that went supernova in 1840. So it's still dying. It died in 1840 and then the bubble, the two bubble of, uh, the two bubbles of gas that erupted in 1840 are still expanding to this day. And these are the two bubbles of gas you see. Whoa! You see that? And you know what's inside th this, uh, this, this, um, this, uh, these two bubbles? What? What do you? What happens after a star dies? A nebula. Well, a nebula, but you're left with a corpse, right? You. A, a white dwarf. A white dwarf. And so, if you look in uh, in a different wavelength, I actually don't know what part of the spectrum this was taken in. Presumably infrared. If it you looks look, ultraviolet to me. Actually, uh, there's, we'll talk about ultraviolet radiation. But um, if you look at a different part of the wavelength, you see this this white star? Yes, you see this white that's star? That's the white dwarf. That right there is the white dwarf. And right next to it, right next to it, there's another star that you actually cannot see. Um, but that's a normal star. It just happened to be within the death throes of a of another star. So, oh, hey, what's this? So this oh, another corpse? Eh, who cares? This is an animation um, of Eta Carina, uh, of how it was formed. So someone actually went there and recorded it happening. No, in they did not. Yeah. They this didn't is, even have video this. recording in 1840. Okay, yes. So this is, a, of, uh, this is a... Uh, this is a simulation. Fake. Yeah, that's <laughs> fake. But obviously. at least you have an idea of how how this kind of thing can happen, right? Yeah. And in fact, if we're Why lucky, are there two gas bubbles? Exactly. That's a good question, and I have no idea. But I would suspect that it has something to do with how the star went, ex, uh, went supernova. Because when the star goes supernova, what happens is that the pressure exerted on the surface of the star exceeds the gravitational force required to keep the star stable. Yeah, that's right. So that's why the gravitational pressure on the star is just too much. Is is too li uh, the gravitational force is not enough to not enough keep to the keep star, star together. Mm -hmm. The pressure on the surface of the star makes it go boom. So if, if we're lucky, our sun might end up like this. You know, uh, like an. I wouldn't call like that this. lucky. Yeah, so, we'd all die. At least the people who are on Earth. And you mentioned ultraviolet radiation, right? Mm -hmm. That's actually what's causing this this crazy skin-like surface right here. You see all of these stars out here on the top. Yeah. They're emitting a lot of ultraviolet radiation, and that radiation is kind of sculpting this cosmic these cosmic cliffs, these cosmic walls, right here. Um, and this ionizing, this is just dust and gas, right? Hmm. This is but just can dust you tell me why these two are different colors? Yes. So, first of all, uh, the colors tell you the elements that used of to be course. there, right? But we don't have a bright line. We don't have a spectra. Of this part. We don't have a spectra of, um, of, uh, of the cosmic cliffs, but... I wonder why. Um, we just took, uh, JWSC took this picture with NERCAM and MIRI. It did not produce a spectra I don't know why but uh, they're gonna they're working on it so um, 
what was I saying? Yes, well, you asked why this is orange, right? So mm -hmm. it has to do with uh, with the composition of the star that created this this nebula, right? We do know. Do they that, have a name for it? Uh, I don't know. So we know that stars are mostly hydrogen and a little bit of helium, right? So that accounts for this orangish glow that you have down here in the bottom. This ionizing dust and gas is, is mostly hydrogen and helium. And, and this gas is trying to fight the ultraviolet radiation coming from these stars at the top. And uh, some, of, some of the gas is winning the fight. You see this, uh, this little peak in the, in the mountain? Mm -hmm. This peak is seven light years high. That's, that's how big it is. So imagine, uh, we could fit like 10 solar systems right here. Yeah, I think about right it. Right here. Because the distance from sun to earth is billions of miles. And yet, in light, that's on uh, light terms, that's um, eight minutes. Yeah, so you can imagine, we can probably fit 10 or on, on the order of magnitude of 100 solar systems. Even if we were traveling right at the speed of light, the fastest the speed that there could ever be in the universe, it would take seven years to cross that one peak. Yes, and you asked me, you know, oh, oh, that's yeah. what. So this is in the visible uh, visible wavelength. So it says it right here. This is in the Eta Carina in the visible. This is presumably infrared. Here's how it looks in the X-ray. Here's how it looks but in why, the infrared. But why is infrared depicted in all sorts of rainbow colors? Usually mm -hmm. I, I see it. Is it like more heat and less heat? It could be because they didn't convert it to a false color image. Uh, Usually I see yeah. infrared depicted as in red, pink, uh, yellow, and orange. That might be infrared converted to a false color image. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe they didn't convert it right here. So, okay. Why would me, it be rainbow? Let me show things? you some of the other, uh, other features of the Carina Nebula. This right here is a Bach globule. We talked about Bach globules over here when you saw the map of the Carina Nebula. This is one example of a, of a Bach globule. And what you see is that this, uh, this is just dust and gas, right? Mm -hmm. This dust and gas is uh, like a block, blocking filter. It blocks all of the visible light coming in from behind. So that's why it's called a Bach globule. Oh. Um, and by the way, this itself is a neb, um, it's, uh, this is not a nebula. So it's a but, globule that blocks. Yes, it's a box globule. Yeah. Got it. Um, this is the keyhole nebula. You saw a picture of it uh, yeah, in the map. It looks like a keyhole. Yes. A keyhole. Um, this, these are the cosmic pillars. Uh, in fact, this is an image from Hubble. But this itself, these cosmic pillars are also in, in Carina Nebula. That's why I put this image here. Um, that's, that's its relevance. Um, so, this, oh, and that, that's... This, the, oh gee, did I get scratched? And this is a caterpillar with a seat forehead. This is another example of a Bach globule. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we obviously it's a maybe, globule. to the untrained eye, maybe this looks like some uh, caterpillar, but this is um, another caterpillar. This is an example of a nebula uh, that blocks uh, visible light behind it. It even has an eye. Yeah, and so you need infrared to pierce through this the interstellar dust and gas and see any stars that might be forming inside. Why do they call it the Carina Nebula of all things? Oh, well, it, because it's in the constellation Carina. Oh. But you might then ask, why is the constellation That's named That's what Carina? I was about to ask. Well, I don't know that. It's probably named after some Greek god like Pegasus uh, or, or whatnot. Oh, wasn't Pegasus a flying horse? Anyway, that's all we have for today for image number three of Eta Carina in the Cosmic Cliffs. Can you show the JWST yes. image? Yeah, look mm -hmm. at that. Thank you everybody for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.